Drop it. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Flexi and today I'm going to show you my deck profile for Hermes Painters in the November 2021 format. Very grateful that they've been reprinted in the Megatins. And before I hop into the profile, I want to give shout outs to my boy Atomic once again. Uh, ever since we've met, he's been helping me out with his huge Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge and he's introduced me to this deck, but also many other decks which I'm going to show, you off, show off on this uh, channel in the near future. And so without further ado, Let's hop right in now. In terms of Emancipator cards, really, I'm playing um, 15, I think, or 14, something like that. I'm playing three um, analyzers, I think they're called. Yeah, uh, three seekers and three researchers. Um, they all have the same effects. They can special summon themselves under certain conditions, and uh, they can also excavate the top five cards of your deck and special summon a non tuned level four or rock monster. Um, analyzer can special summon itself when. Uh, when only the opponent controls a monster, which is the worst of the three. Uh, Seeker can special summon itself when uh, when you control an Emancipator monster, and Researcher can special summon itself when you control a Rock monster, which is obviously the best one. Then I play two Drag Guide, uh, the main deck ones, the Stones, which, if they're special summoned by an Emancipator effect, you draw one card, which is alright, but more importantly, it's a Water monster that is quite easily accessible, and uh, it enables your... Uh, drag guide negate which usually you would do via the needle fiber but in this deck needle fiber is mostly a part of the combo or like you want to have them on your end board uh, that's why you need a, an alternative water monster in your graveyard for the spell trap negate to be live and then i'm also playing three at emancipator signs which is not only a monster reborn for a rock monster but also if you reborn an emancipator monster uh, you can stack any one rock monster from your deck on the top of your deck which in some cases is going to be the drag guide, uh, the main deck one, to make sure that you get the draw and the water monster and graveyard, uh, which is very cool. So that's about it for the main deck and Emancipator cards. Now uh, coming up is the next engine that I've been really surprised about. I didn't really think about that beforehand, but um, I'm playing Prank Kids. Now three Roxies and the one uh, Lampsies are very strong because you don't summon the Roxies and that essentially ends you on a Link 2 and a level 4 Rock Monster on field, uh, which is very strong. And also, Roxies can be special summoned uh, by the Emancipator Monsters, which uh, Lampsies can. So Lampsies is definitely this uh, less optimal starter from the two. Uh, but Roxies is very strong, and uh, he enables rank 4 plays, uh, Synchro 6, Synchro 8. Uh, he gives you a free Link 2 and stuff. It's, it's very strong. If you want to play at Emancipators, I really urge you to play the uh, Prank Kids engine. And then now are coming up some of the other rock extenders, uh, which are two Doki Doki. Uh, Doki Doki is pretty cool, and sometimes he can even be a, a rather good normal summon, but usually you just want to special summon him out. Uh, he's level two rock monster, so that's cool, but also he can essentially turn any one rock monster in your hand into an extender from deck, which is very nice. But playing him at three is a little much. Uh, that's why I think this at two is optimal. Uh, then there's Quakimere Supplier, which is an extender in and of itself, but it also searches your card on summon, which is very cool. And also it's a level 4 rock monster, of course. And then the card you usually search with him is Quakimere Guardian, which is a monster negate. So it's it's not an extender, but if you special summon it out with an, an Emancipator effect, uh, it's essentially, your combo is essentially Nibiru proof. And then uh, that's it for the rock monsters, but you also play 3 Parallel Exceed, which uh, whatever link, sum link monster you, uh, you're able to summon, uh, you essentially get access to Gallant Granite, which can search you any one of the Emancipator monsters, whatever you, uh, you need. And so that's very cool, but also it's a wind monster, which is I think the only wind monster in our entire deck And this one enables you to essentially gain a DD Crow-esque effect with your with your Reptite uh, in the extra deck Which is very cool, and then the final monster, or actual like combo monster in the deck Is um, Plague Spreader Zombie, which is just the best needle fiber target this deck has in my personal opinion um, But that's pretty much about it for the monsters of this deck Now, there are a couple cards left uh, one of them is Calm the Grave, which is supposed to protect us from hand traps uh, during our combo. Uh, I would play this card at 3 if it was a 3, but uh, for the time being I'm going to play 2 Crossout Designators, which I've been very lucky to pull from the Megatons, uh, from one case by the way. And um, as targets for that I'm playing 2 Ash Blossom, or actually I'm playing hand traps just for the sake of playing hand traps, but they're also like double functioning as uh, targets for the Crossout. 2 Valor, 1 Ogre, 1 Nibiru, and 1 Impermanence. Um, to Ash, I mean obviously Ash is the uh, most widely spread hand trap and also the most effective one against most decks. 
Uh, Valor and Imperm are very good because uh, not only are they good against many decks as well, but they're also uh, very hard hitting on Nibiru, uh, or sorry, on uh, Needle Fiber. Ghost Ogre I'm playing because one of my friends plays Ghost Ogre a lot and I would rather be safe from it uh, in most cases. And then also the one of Nibiru of course because Nibiru is probably the most devastating hand trap of all of them against combo decks. Now this is pretty much all I can say about the main deck. Uh, going on to the extra deck, I'm playing uh, one of each of the good uh, Emancipator extra deck monsters to be honest. I don't know whether there are other extra deck monsters of Emancipators. Um, but yeah, uh, Leonite is essentially a... Um, he searches you an Animatespater card, well, all of them excavate cards uh, off the top of the deck, and this one adds you an Animatespater card, this one special summons uh, a rock monster, and this one bounces monsters uh, cards on the field up to the amount of rock monsters you excavated. Uh, but this one is also a spell trap and gate, this one is also a DD Crow, and this one is a monster reborn on the opponent's turn. If you control a monster with the same, or if you have a monster with the same attribute in your graveyard, that's why I play the, um, the Drag Guide main deck one. Uh, that's why Exceed is very important, and that's why Lampsies is very good in this deck. So, um, and also, uh, since those two are level 6, uh, Synchro Monsters, non-tuners, they enable other cool Synchro plays, which you're going to see in a second. Um, then I play Gallant Granite, it could as well be an Animatespater monster, it adds you one, it's pretty much free uh, advantage. Then I play uh, Meow Meow Moo and Wow Wow Bark, I would assume. Uh, those cards in German, I don't know how they're called in English exactly, but uh, that should do. Um, they're essentially just, you know, part of the engine to generate free advantage off of the normal summoned uh, Prank Kids monster. Then there's Health Fibrex, of course, it's a free monster and uh, gains a lot of advantage as well on the opponent's turn if you manage to keep him on the, uh, until the end of the turn. Then Appaloosa, it's part of any combo deck, I would say, uh, don't need to explain that, I think. There's Formula Synchron, which uh, is the target for Needle Fiber if he stays on the field because he draws your card and he can also enable you to go into other Synchro monsters, which you're going to see in a second. Uh, there's Herald of the Outlight, which in some situations you might just be able to synchro for a level 4, uh, which is very cool though, because he's an Omni Negate, he's kind of a Macrocosmos. Then I play um, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, uh, which is very freely accessible, what I've said before, with the level 6 at Emancipator Monsters, and it's a Monster Negate that's uh, very nice, very strong, gains attack points. And then the final synchro monster in this deck is Satellite Warrior, because uh, if you have any level 8 synchro monster on your field, which you usually want, uh, want to have and will have, uh, you can use the Formula Synchron of the Needle Fiber effect uh, to Synchro Summon Satellite Warrior on the opponent's turn and usually, uh, due to the way the combo works, uh, you will most likely pop 3 cards with him and you will gain 3000 attack points, sometimes 2, sometimes 4, but most likely 3. Um, so that's, in my opinion, a very good addition to the combo. And then to fi uh, finish off the extra deck, we have Abyss Dweller, which is pretty good in any format pretty much, where <laughs> at least one of the like good decks has uh, is reliant on graveyard effects. And we have very free access to Rainforest if you really need to have it, so uh, that kind of goes without saying. And then I also play Zeus, uh, simply because we play Abyss Dweller and I'm sure that in like competitive play he will come up often, uh, the Abyss Dweller I mean. Uh, that's why we will have many uh, chances to go into Zeus. And then the final card is Al Mirage, which if you happen to open the Plague Spreader Zombie and no other combo pieces whatsoever, uh, you can just normal summon in him and go into Omni Rush to keep comboing off. Or what I've also done is um, I opened Dragite, the main deck one, and Parallel Exceed and no other combo pieces. And then I normal summon Dragite, linked him away into Omni Rush, and uh, with the Parallel Exceed I was able to search a researcher and combo off into a pretty big board still. Uh, so that's very fun. Uh, Omni Rush pretty important for this deck in my humble opinion. Now this is for the main and extra, the side deck. Usually I don't talk a lot about the side deck because it's very subjective and also depending on the format. But in this case I have a couple things to say. So I'm citing one attack Valor, two Nibiru and two Impermanence. Uh, those are essentially uh, complementing the hand traps in my main deck lineup. So if I say um, I don't, I, I know I'm going second, I want to take out the, um, the cross out designator or I just want to focus more on drawing one of the hand traps, then I can side them in and out. I also play three uh, Skullmeister just in case that I want to switch up my hand trap lineup in general. That's it for the hand traps. Then I also play three Dark Ruler, uh, just against combo decks, and nothing much to say here. Uh, one Red Reboot, two Cosmic Cyclones, and one uh, Feather Duster. Nothing much to say here as well, just generic back row hate. And that's pretty much it. And now, to show you how the deck like works and how um, the, the end board can look like, I'm going to do a quick test hand. The, the thing is about the Emancipators is that it's not like a fixed combo, there's no... I mean, sure, there's the Roxy's Normal Summon, which is kind of a one-card combo, but it doesn't really end you on anything, right? It just gives you a free Link 2, uh, yeah, Link 2 and a level 4 Rock Monster. 
but without any further extenders, especially tuners, you're not really getting anywhere. Um, that's why, and also the, like normal summoning a researcher, for example, is not going to do you anything either, except you like might hit a rock monster, then go into needle fiber, summon a plague spreader, but then what? Like, yeah, that's pretty much it, right? Uh, so it really depends on what hand you're opening and you usually need more than just one or two cards uh, But that doesn't mean that you uh, necessarily end on like a, an empty hand, but the full board uh, You still like add cards draw cards and whatnot So you usually end on a full board with like two or three cards left in hand, uh, which is very nice and now I'm hoping that I've shuffled this deck well enough because I would like to waste no more time and hop right into the test hand and then show you what this deck is capable of. Okay, so drawing five cards, and those are Crossout Designator, which is interesting. Parallelic Seed, Signs. Okay, okay, this is a very strong hand um, because I'm pretty much protected from two hand traps. I have Parallelic Seed, I have um, Seeker, and I have Signs. Uh, that's very good. The sad part about this, which I just realized, is that Seeker has 1200 uh, attack points. So in case this whiffs, for example, I can't link it off into Almirage, which is kind of sad, but it doesn't matter. Uh, normal Summoning, Seeker, Excavating 5 cards. Okay, this is perfect. This is... okay, I, I, I can't really decide now. Uh, see, the thing is, uh, I can either summon Roxy's, go for a Link 2 plus Roxy's and then uh, just keep comboing off. Or I can go for Drag Eye, draw a card, and then... Yeah, the thing is, yeah, yeah. Mm. Difficult. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take... Yeah, the reason the reason I'm taking Roxy's here is because I have Signs and I can just uh, stack Dragite on top uh, before using one of the next Advanced effects. Um, so I still get the draw effect. In this case, it would be a mistake not to take Roxy's. Now I'm putting those four cards at the bottom of my deck. Then I'm linking away the Roxy's for the... I think it's Meow Meow Moo. Yeah, that's only one. And then, Chain Link 1, I'm going to use uh, Roxy's Chain Link 2, I'm going to use Parallel Exceed, Special Summon it. Uh, actually, is this cost? No, it's not cost. Uh, Chain Link 2, Summoning Exceed, uh, Chain Link 1, since I'm playing, uh, since I'm, uh, I opened two hand trap counters, I'm going to banish Call by the Grave, draw a card, and then summon the uh, Lampsies. <coughs> okay, and then... Uh, Effect is going to trigger off uh, Parallel Exceed, summoning a second copy, which is right there. And then I'm going to link those two away, which is going to summon um, Wow Wow Bark, if that is what it's called. Um, I'm going to summon it there. And then the effect is going to trigger, I think it's burning the opponent for 500, and then I can summon another Roxy's. And now I can use the two parallel exceeds to go into Gallant Granite, which is uh, going to search me a researcher. And now, just for the heck of it, we can uh, imagine that the opponent activates Nibiru. Uh, we chain. Um, Crossout Designator, uh, banishing Nibiru, negating the effect, so we're proof, uh, hand trap proof in that regard. Um, also, I'm adding research to my hand. Now, what can we do from here? Summon Needle Fiber with those two. Let's just pretend I summoned this one right here. <laughs> uh, needle Fiber effect is going to summon Lake Spreader Zombie. I'm going to activate Signs, uh, Revive Seeker, and since it's an, an since it's an Emancipator monster, uh, I can stack one Rock monster from the uh, deck to the top of my deck, which is going to be the Dragite. And now, since I've used the effect of uh, Seeker already, it's not as important. Um, what I can do now is Synchro for a six. Uh, which is Reptite, then Reptite effect, I excavate 5 and special summon the Dragite, which is the obvious choice considering I've 
specifically stacked it there for this effect to happen. Uh, then I can draw one card due to the effect of Dragite, which is another crossout designator, interesting. Um, is it once per turn? Yeah. That's not a problem though, because I have uh, Plague Strider in Grave, or I will have him soon. I think I'm going to go for a 3 material Appaloosa here, Special Summon, Researcher, activate the effect. <laughs> okay, this <laughs> uh, this is an interesting excavate. Uh, I only have one target, which is surprisingly also a good target. Um, this effect is then going to add me another Guardian. Uh, activate the effect, or actually no, not activate the effect. Uh, synchro for a Leonite, just for the heck of it. Activate the effect to excavate 5. And then add an Edemancipator card to my hand. Of these, I've. This is interesting also because I've excavated all three Edemancipator monsters. The best one is obviously Researcher, so I'm going to take this one. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. And now I'm going to stack uh, the second Guardian to the top of my deck, reviving. Plague Spreader Zombie. Um, and I will. Synchro into. I'm gonna put it here because of the uh, light from the camera. Um, for a drag guide. So, this is pretty much the end board now, and also I'm going to set a um, crossout designator. So, what I have here is another negation in case they do try to activate um, Ash, for example, or Vela or whatever. Um, I have three monster negations, I have a spell trap negate, I have a DD Crow effect because I have a parallel seed in the graveyard, and also I have um, Needle Fiber, which is going to summon out Formula Synchron, which is the, going to draw us a card, which is the Guardian that we stacked at the top. And then uh, we essentially have multiple options now. We can either synchro those two away for the Satellite Warrior, which is going to. Uh, one synchro, yeah. Pop three cards and then boost himself by 3000. Or if we need another monster negation, for example, we can also synchro for um, for the Crystal Link Synchro Dragon, uh, which is also very cool. Or if we had another level 2 monster on field, or if we like somehow set it up that we uh, end on a level 2 monster here, non tuner, of course, and we can use Formula Synchron as a level 2 for a Herald of the Arclight, which is another Omni Negate, but also a Macrocosmos-esque effect. So yeah, this is a pretty cool end board in my opinion, and also uh, very interesting is just, there's so many options and uh, so many things to keep in mind, especially with the excavating effects and with the stacking of the deck and stuff. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the test hand, that's the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then uh, leave a like. If you have any suggestions or questions, then also please leave them in the comments. I'm always going to respond to them. Uh, there's also way more content to come, so if you like what you see, then subscribe to the channel. And other than that, guys, see you next time.